a point that really kind of still, I think, stands out to me as one of the most interesting aspects of, of the Shroud is, is that that moment um, in 1898 when the, the first photograph was taken of the Shroud. Um, so, mm-hmm. so can you maybe talk about that a little bit? And why, why was that such a, a profound, I guess, moment when, when uh, the first photograph was taken and kind of what was discovered um, in, in that? Well, it was stunning, Uh, 1898, um, a lawyer, Secundo Pia, he was also a city councilman uh, and also an amateur photographer. And he got permission, there was going to be an ostension and exhibition of the shroud. And he got permission from King Umberto I to be the first person to ever photograph the shroud. And of course, that was, you know, 1898, an old timey, uh, old style camera. So when he went back home to develop it in the dark room, and he has those big, you know, plates, he goes and he's developing, he's in the dark room, he's developing, you know, with got the plates putting on the, the chemicals and stuff like that. And then with what he sees with the photograph of the face, on the shroud, he was so stunned, he almost dropped the the photographic plate. But what he saw, when you when you initially look at the shroud, just the cloth itself and the image on it, the face looks almost cartoonish. It's you know, you don't really see eyes, you just see these little things like almost like goggles are on the on over the eyes. Um, you see a sort of this body image, but you know, it looks kind of strange and you know, I don't know what he saw is in, and, and again, you know, a lot of younger people are not familiar with the old style of, you know, using film and a camera and having right. to get film developed and where you then get these little strips called negatives to where the dark is light and the light is dark. And so back then there were negatives. And when he saw the reverse where the where the dark portions were light and the light portions were dark, what he saw stunned him. He saw this highly detailed face and images that you don't see when you just see the cloth. And like I said, he, well, he reported that he almost dropped it. And the interesting thing is, is when he then was showing people publicly the photographic negative and how there's all this amazing detail to where you can really see you get a very good idea of of what the person's face looked like that made the image on the shroud and he was hound he was he had a cloud over him where people were thought were thinking he was a fraud that he was trying to pull a hoax on people and that followed him for many many years until uh I think it was maybe 1931 when Henri uh, took photos of the shroud and his negatives proved that Secundo Pia's photos were legitimate. And so, um, but it, so he, he got to be vindicated during his lifetime, which I'm sure he was glad uh, to see and got to tell everybody, I told you so. <laughs> but, right. uh, but yeah, so that was that was a really uh, stunning moment in history. Mm. Yeah, I think uh, just so Teddy Teddy steals all the great stuff by speaking <laughs> speaking first, right? But uh, I think one thing you miss, Teddy, is ladies first. <laughs> ladies first, okay. Uh, but the, there is something significant you miss. So, haha. Um, but uh, there's this major impact. Look, the world scientists up until this point, up until 1898, when Secondo Pia took that photo of the shroud and discovered the photographic negativity aspect of the shroud's images, um, 
that was earth shattering for the uh, scientific community at the time. And this was totally shocking. It was just assumed. This is just some medieval artwork, like, you know, uh, Bishop Darcy said back in the 1380s and stuff that there was, there was no conception that this thing might be real. And so when they discovered this, this sent shockwaves around the world. And this actually led to, in 1900, in 1902, the first ever, at the French Academy of Sciences, they had a medical exposition because they could now see the images clearly in this photo negativity. And, you know, even a non-religious agnostic like Dr. Yves Delage admitting this covered a corpse. My gosh, this is proof. Medic, as a medical expert, and they presented this to the French Academy of Sciences saying there's no way this is artwork. This covered a human body. So that's something, another incredible thing that sparked off the scientific, subsequent scientific studies. But it all started with that photo because before that, it was just assumed there's nothing to talk about. The shroud is a, a painting. Who cares about it? With with what you see, if you actually look at the shroud today, what you're going to see is is a very you know kind of obscure. You're going to be able to tell that this is this is a person. Um, but but once you you get that photo negative of that image, it's suddenly it's like an actual. It's like a positive image. Um, you can see the details of the face and so much more there, which was just something that I think people uh, to grasp how how truly crazy that is. Um, and, and and I think one of the things that that continues to point to is that um, you know who who would have thought of that? You know, I mean this 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 material, this shroud, this this linen that had existed long before photography was even invented and we you know people even knew what uh photo negatives were how how is it that one would have known how to correctly implant this image onto this cloth so that you know centuries later when something like photography was invented uh and the picture was taken of it they knew that these details would suddenly come out i mean that the idea that that image was somehow you know um produced onto there artificially it, it just becomes a lot less probable uh when you when you consider that is, is that kind of part of why what why you guys would say that that photo the the initial photograph was kind of a significant moment is that it kind of pointed to in a sense on its own the authenticity and then sparked the the following research that that happened Absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's, um, it was, it was incredible, right? Cause it was just assumed it was a painting before then. So yes, uh, of the scientists, they assume it was uh, a fake, but once they saw this photo negative, right? The, so the, the negative images were actually the, what would have been the photo positive. Um, mm -hmm. This was revolutionary because obviously in the medieval period, they did not have uh, photography or, you know, that kind of technology. It was unheard of uh, at that time. So they, there would have been no way for an art medieval artist to uh, to create, let alone anticipate photograph technology and purposefully create negative images just to create that feature. That would have been historically impossible and scientifically impossible because they wouldn't have had the technology to do so at the time. Um, so yeah, so I think that was kind of where it was revolutionary to them. There, there's no way an artist could have purposefully done this. So. Where we, where we are after that is where the current scientific state is, okay, could it, could it have been a happy accident, a byproduct of some medieval artistic process? And that's where we get into further scientific studies like STIRP in 1978, which rule out those further options.